Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And uh, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the shell hoists on the Iowa-class battleships. And uh, it's just going to be a short video to answer some of your questions. You guys have been uh, hitting us with a lot of gun-related questions lately. And uh, many of those are covered in other videos, but uh, some of the topics are buried inside half-hour other videos that uh, you just can't search for and find. So we're going to break this one out into to a short little five-minute thing. Um, shell hoists on the fast battleships, how are they different? from on some of the, the slightly older battleships. And uh, the shells that Iowa-class battleships fire, are they interchangeable with other battleships? Um, there's no such thing as a short answer, is there? The uh, short answer is most of them with many battleships. So obviously, if a battleship has a different caliber guns, they're not interchangeable. The 14-inch shells can't be fired out of a 16-inch gun. The 16-inch shells can't be fired out of a 14-inch gun. Uh, and it's not even as simple as, well, what if you just stick a 16-inch barrel on uh, a 14-inch armed ship? It's not that easy because the entire rest of the turret is set up to store 14-inch uh, projectiles. So for example, look at these cutouts right here. That is the perfect diameter for a 16-inch shell. We can't just start carrying 18-inch shells. We've got to modify all of that. The shell hoist here is the perfect height and diameter for a 16-inch shell. It, it is very difficult to change the diameter of the guns after the ship is already built. It's not difficult. It's relatively simple in process, but it's expensive. It's expensive. And then you've got bigger guns but you don't have a balanced design. Your armor isn't as effective as your guns. Uh, I can only think of one instance when it was done with the uh, Italian rebuilds during the interwar period. They were not allowed to build new ships. So their older classes of battleships, they, they did uh, increase the diameter of their guns by uh, something like 12 uh, millimeters, uh, 0.6 inches. So, yeah, it's doable, it has been done. It's so complicated, it often isn't done. The North Carolinas were originally designed with a 14-inch gun, but they were able to update as a 16-inch gun because she hadn't been built yet. Uh, the Germans wanted to increase their 11-inch guns on the Scharnhorst class to 15-inch guns, but they never had the time or money to actually do it. Uh, Nisenau was taken in hand to do it, and she got bombed to oblivion because it took so long. So, it, it's not a common thing. That said, you build your battleships in classes so that they're getting incrementally better. You don't want to build a dozen of these ships, but they all have the same fatal flaw. But you try to keep your systems as similar as possible. So for example, both the North Carolina and South Dakota classes had the same turrets. So it was all interchangeable. You didn't have to train people multiple times. You didn't have to add more stuff to the inventory. And the slightly larger caliber guns on the Iowa class still have a lot of similar parts. This is why the Iowas are able to go and strip parts off of the older museum ships uh, when they're reactivated later in their careers. And so that interchangeability and that ease of logistics also ties into the shells. So all of the American fast battleships had shell hoists that were able to accommodate all of the 16-inch shells, the uh, largest armor-piercing shells and the high-capacity shells. But there was one class of American battleships that still had a uh, older style of 16-inch gun. That's the Colorado class. They had 16-inch uh, Mark uh, one 45 caliber guns as built. Those are improved to Mark V and Mark VIII guns later in their careers. While the guns themselves, the barrels are changed, like I talked about is relatively easy, uh, which allows them to accept a higher pressure and a new type of shell, they cannot accept the six foot tall, super heavy Mark VIII armor piercing shell. And because of the Colorado class battleships and their limited shell hoists, a 
taller, like six foot tall, high capacity shell is never fielded, even though you could, in theory, make a much larger shell with a much larger bursting charge. The limiting factor for the Colorados is not so much the barrel itself, although for a heavier shell, you do need to be able to accept higher pressures because it takes more pressure in the combustion chamber for that um, shell to be expelled. But the limiting factor are the shell hoists here. The shell hoists are sort of a conveyor belt that go around. The conveyor belt has periodically spaced poles that stick out of the bottom, and that pole is gonna catch the shell on the way up and take it up to the gun. And because these poles are evenly spaced, you can actually have multiple shells stacked in the hoist between here and the gun house several stories above us. Uh, for example, an Iowa-class battleship can have five shells stacked in the hoist, much like a, a handgun magazine, uh, although these are stacked um, vertically, they're, they're not horizontally. Um, but still, you, you can stack multiple shells in the hoist so you can attain a higher rate of fire earlier on in a battle. The Colorado-class battleships have less spacing between those poles. They cannot fit a full six-foot-tall shell like the Mark 8 armor-piercing one. Uh, so they are not able to fire the super-heavy shell. The U.S. Navy actually has to deploy two separate 16-inch armor-piercing shells during World War II. But to further simplify things, they only deploy the one 16-inch high-capacity round. Uh, and that means that the fast battleships, even though their hoists can accommodate a heavier and taller shell, they do not for the high capacity round. Just how much of a difference is this for the armor piercing shell? The Colorado class is originally designed for the Mark III shell. The Mark III AP shell is 56 and a half inches tall and weighs 2,110 pounds. That is roughly the same size as comparable British 16-inch guns like you see on the Nell rods or Japanese 16-inch uh, guns like you see on the Gato and Mutsu. So uh, that 2,000 to 2,100 pound range is uh, exactly where you would expect these shells to be. During the interwar period, the U.S. Navy flirts with a heavier shell design, and so they develop the Mark V 16-inch AP round. This is now 64 inches tall and 2,240 uh, pounds. So that's about the largest that the shell hoists on the Colorados can accommodate. And it does require uh, rebarreling those ships, taking out the old barrels and modifying them to accept a higher pressure. Uh, but that is very much as thoroughbred as you can make those guns. You could not develop them any further to get any more use out of them. So the Navy has to go to a new style when they develop their new ships. The Mark V is a really interesting round because the US Navy specifically redesigns the armor-piercing cap to be able to uh, give it better plunging fire. It'll, it'll go down at a steeper angle and um, it has less of a cone shape to it, more of a flat shape, so they can punch through things when it's landing um, at a very steep angle, as opposed to older style battleship guns where you're expecting to hit things on the side. This is expecting to go through the armored decks and armored turret roofs of ships. This is an example of design being formatted around doctrine. The US Navy is expecting to fight war plan arms. They're expecting their battle fleet to sail out in the middle of the Pacific and meet the Japanese battle fleet. They're expecting to have pretty good visibility in the sunny, wide open Pacific. And they're expecting to fight a battle at really long ranges, 15 to 20 miles. So they want a good, heavy, penetrating, long range shell. And they even rebuild part of their turrets and design an entirely new shell for this expected battle. Interestingly, during World War II, this type of battle never happens. The US Navy battleship battles take place at night with low visibility at knife fighting range, uh, about 10 miles max at Surigawa Strait, uh, 
less than that off Guadalcanal. So the redesign made sense based on the interwar doctrine of the Navy, but isn't actually how the, the shells were uh, deployed. But it is an interesting midpoint as the Navy is looking at, well, how do we make our shells heavier than everyone else's? A heavier shell means lower velocity, which means less range and a, a greater angle. And that's very much what you get out of the 2,700 pound uh, Mark 8 shells that the US Navy fields with their uh, preeminent 16 inch gun, the Mark 7. So what's another artillery related topic that you'd like to see us make? Uh, let us know in the comments section down below. We'd love to hear from you. Comment down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. You guys are who give us the support that allows us to research more into our own ship. Uh, you can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.